Hi, this is Brian at Brubaker Arms Manufacturing. Today we've got a Winchester Pre-64 Model 70 that was built in 1950. So this guy has been all over America for sure and killed quite a few animals and you'll hear a number of those stories later on. Uh, it was brought in for a full restoration. The metal work was um, pretty worn out. It was this gun has been very well taken care of its whole life so it wasn't any real pitting or anything in the metal to spend a lot of time filing out um, but we did polish it out to 340 finish it with a nice scotch bright uh, just gives it that nice shine uh, that you see here it's uh, remo we removed all of the original machining mark so it's in better than original condition. They used to have a plug here in the uh, for the rear sight to uh, allow the stiff four power uh, scope that had been mounted on it uh, to be there. And the plug was just a kind of big square so we uh, rounded that dovetail over to, to keep the nice profile of the classic Model 70 barrel. The stock had a lot of oil and dirt buildup around the action screws and the rear of the action. So we used some whiting compound and to soak the dirt and oil up out of the stock. And we steamed a number of dings out of it, I cleaned off all the old finish before using an alkanet root uh, seal stain to bring out the character the figure of the wood and refinishing with nice oil finish. Uh, we recut all of the checkering and there you go. Uh, its gun is fully restored and waiting for its uh, future owner, the great grandson of the current owner. So uh, this gun has, as I said, has been all over and killed more than I have and uh, has a whole nother, uh, whole nother lease on life. It is a legacy uh, for this family. It's part of this family's legacy. Uh, do you recognize this gun? No. Yeah, it looks like a Model 70 Winchester. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely a, is. Is it a 270? Yes, it is. Uh, looks like it might have had a stiff scope on it here at one time. It did. <laughs> I recognized the gun. Yeah. <laughs> well, that gun, uh, that gun's been around. It sure has. Uh, Hans showed us a lot of pictures of you and this gun <laughs> and quite a few different animals and a few of him and this gun. 1957 I went to Alaska mm -hmm. on my uncle's fishing boat. I was shooting seals for bounty. <laughs> I, re I loaded 300 rounds up that I had with me. Uh -huh. 100, they're 100 grain boats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and my whole life I bought this gun when I was 15 years old. I never shot any big game ever in my life with anything other than this gun. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That was that Very was cool. that was the gun. Yeah, God, that's a good looking gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best looking gun you got in here. <laughs> that is really it is. You know, and I always felt and you know, all the time growing in my whole life, mm -hmm. I have never needed another gun other than this one. Mm -hmm. I figured it was the it, to me it was the best one. Who was that O'Connor that wrote all of the stories about uh, uh, in, in the books? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 100% with him. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. nice. I thought it'd be boogered up. I mean, they, you must have had to take some some boogers out of it. I mean, it was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we did a little time on it. <laughs> we did, we did yeah. a little bit of work on it. Yes. <laughs> but that is that is that is really something. We certainly do. Yep. To, to me, this is the finest rifle that anybody could. You, you don't need anything other than that right there. Mm -hmm. They are, they're very good guns. Yeah. Uh, I love the controlled round feed. I love the original Model 70 trigger. Yeah. Uh, they're, 
They're great, great guns. But you can't imagine that. I mean, it was rough on a boat in the salt water mm -hmm. in Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, goat hunting, I killed a few goats. I killed probably half a dozen goats with this gun. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. so. We were very impressed. Uh, with your capability <laughs> with it. Uh, if you, you name it, I, I put it, I, <laughs> I did it all. Uh -huh. 60 grains of 4831 and a Sierra boat tail bullet, 150 grains. There you go. That was yeah. all we needed. <laughs> cool. We are, we actually conspired with Hans here mm -hmm. to get you down here and get you guys, you know, so we could present you your <laughs> rifle. <laughs> and also uh, to see if we could get you if, to share some stories with if us. If you wouldn't have done anything with it, I, uh, if it would have been sitting up there like it was, I uh -huh. would have recognized yeah. it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, uh, it see, I started reloading for this when I was uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate I had a 41 Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Along the river, in the, when Everett was called Milltown in those days, there's no mills left. Mm -hmm. But old man Walton at the Walton Mill had a 300 yard range. Mm -hmm. And I would drive down there, I'd drive right through the mill, right, go by the green chain and all the, everything, and drive out to that, to the uh, range. Yeah. And, uh, and shoot, uh, I'd shoot pop bottles, you know, back from 300 yards and stuff. It, uh, it's a good way to spend your <laughs> days after school. It was, you know. <laughs> it really was. Very nice. Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm impressed with it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I really am. We are, we're impressed with you and your <laughs> the legacy that you passed on to Hans. And say, I, I, I heard a story that this guy took two bucks with one yeah, bullet yeah, and yeah. you reclaimed it. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> that was the craziest thing. Yeah, I took Hans up and I told him the day before season, I told him, I said, we're gonna come back here in the morning and you go up to that tree, yeah. that pine tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just be down here. Yeah. And I went down there, opening day. God, I'm down there, not, it didn't seem like it was very long. I heard, boom, <laughs> I better go check. So anyway, I, I think I had to tag one, didn't I? I told him, I said, I got one, so did you. <laughs> so, uh, that's that what he a... told me. He says, from now on, you're both. <laughs> so so that's, the last, that's the last thing I shot. Right? From then on, I had both on. Right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It was a great shot. It was a long ways. I should have. Uh, I should have used the tree. It was probably it was probably my hand load. <laughs> well, it was, but I should have I should have got against the tree because it was yeah, like a 200 it. yard shot and yeah. I just yeah. shot off hand. Good job. But I, <laughs> One time I was there hunting in the same area by myself, and there was a buck going up that was a, it was kind of getting a long ways away on the other side of the going up the hill and I'd kind of been racing the guy he saw it too you know with me <laughs> anyway I shot that stiff mount it had it, it, it come loose or it was I shot 18 times and I never hit anything so I only had two shells left so I'm walking back to the truck and I see another buck I don't know shoot it so I, I figured I've shot everywhere I'll shoot over its rear end and just see what happens. I shot, nothing happened. So then I only had one shell, but there was still, the deer was still there. So I said, I'll shoot again, my last shell. I shot, boom, it dropped just like that. And I can't remember where I held, but I hit it right in the neck. <laughs> so. I think those were you yeah, had hunter green bullets by then because you ran out of your... Probably, yeah. <laughs> you were about 14 when this was taken from Yeah, I was 14. The, the, the year before, you'd shot one in the same spot. Oh. <laughs> when, I, when I was with you, so... With? Okay. So then the next year, I got to use the yeah. 270 and then... Uh, I've always been into aesthetics. And I remember it was... a. Uh, it must have been a good one-shot kill because I don't remember any. No, no, it, there was no drama afterwards. I mean, we had the deer, and uh, that was it. Well, what 
we, I saw it, we came a long ways. It took probably 20 minutes coming, down, coming along the side hill and along this trail. And you told me just wait, wait. And so I was all set up on this rock. I had the gun on steady rest and stuff. Well, you were behind me, you couldn't see. So, so I shot it and the, and the recoil pushed me back. So I didn't get to see the deer fall. Oh, okay. And the other ones came running right at us. Yeah. The deer came running right down to us. And I turned around, I said, did I get him? And he said, I don't know. So so he walked over there, and there, there was right where I shot him, he dropped. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty neat to have to, to wait through the scope and have deer going through the scope and finally get to see the one with horns and, and shoot him. So. Talk about seeing something through the scope. <laughs> I was up there deer hunting one time, and a coyote was running fast as it could go. <clears throat> and I remember, I picked it up in my four power stiff scope and <laughs> with that gun. And I thought, man, he's really moving. So I was moving and I went past it a little way so that I couldn't even see the coyote. <laughs> and I shot. The next thing I look see through the scope is the coyote going like this. <laughs> it was the best running shot I've ever made in my whole life. <laughs> And uh, it, it was a big coyote. I remember uh, I started packing it back to the truck and it got too heavy. I figured, no, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even gonna do that. Uh, uh, well, yeah. so, but anyway, that was a good deer. The one shot kill in Hans's first deer. Yeah. No, I mean, it was kind of like you read about in the magazines, and, but it was, you know, I've never had that happen since where you've had to wait and have them coming through my scope, you know, and, um, but, and one thing was good, I was, I was a good shot. I, I shot a lot of things. This was a good shot. He so that, uh, that was a big help. But it was nice having my dad right there, too. And, uh, um, you know, I'd probably hunted blacktails and stuff with it before that, but I really loved getting out in eastern Washington where you could see. You know, I just, I just, I love that, um, <laughs> that feeling. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hans would belong to the rifle club in Marysville there. And they were kind of into high-end uh, air rifles. So Hans brought one home one day, and I, I, we got to shoot it. We got to shoot it in the house. God, we had leaded glass windows, and I'd never shot a gun like that that had a trigger. You just barely touch on it anyway. To make a long story short. Three ounce trigger. Yeah, three ounce trigger. Make a long story short, <laughs> I got a hole through the window. <laughs> God, I wonder what's on the next picture. Yes, I gotta take a look. <laughs> oh, God. Still, I still got the uh, my uh, my deal that holds my uh, my rounds there. Well, actually, I got it out in the car. <laughs> oh really? Or yeah. you got it? Well, I know I it's still around. I wonder. But you know what? Don Haugen was with me. He did, yeah. He had just gotten out of the. Uh, he was in Germany. He'd gotten out early to shoot in a rifle match. I'd never hunted with him before. Mm -hmm. So I says, Don, let's go elk hunting together. We went to my aunt and uncle's ranch in Ellensburg. And I went to a place that had never gone before. I said, we're getting up really early. It was dead dark in the morning. We took off and I drove uh, north of Ellensburg, probably up towards Table Mountain somewhere. And I, uh, and I'll be doggone. It just started getting light. <laughs> and I could see two bulls down there, this one and another one. Yeah. Huh. And where we were, there were cars that, or there were guys this way and there was guys this way that I found out later they'd been hunting them you know for a week and they would take a different route every time but I just happened to be on the right route and there was a little coolie coming up here and I I, I told Don Haugen I said I'll take the first one you get ready and you and he was shooting a model 70 uh, 30 out six <laughs> they're coming up I shot put it down uh, he shot all of the shells. He would shoot, and I'd look at the elk. <laughs> he, he never hit it. Yeah. And it was like shooting a goldfish in a bowl. I mean, it was right yeah. there. Huh. And uh, and another thing, if you ever take pictures, you don't have the gut pile <laughs> in the uh, in the picture. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 
It should get the, the elk That's should true. get the elk should get drug a little ways. <laughs> but anyway, that was me. I wasn't very old then either. This is in Alaska, and that boat survived being on a fishing boat in Alaska, which was tough duty. Huh. Wow. And <laughs> this is on the uh, west side of Cook Inlet, which is uh, there's. Uh, there's nothing there now, and there was less than nothing there back in 1957, uh, two years before Alaska became a state. Uh, and if you see this, a double exposure, you can see that I killed a bear. With a, <laughs> yeah. See the bear? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that. <laughs> in fact, That's pretty I, good. I ended up killing a couple of bears when I was up there, and a lot of seals. Oh, God, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you guys must have some days off from fishing that you could go. We did. We, we, I think we only fished like one or two days a week, so all I did is fool around, shoot seals. And, wow. and, uh, huh. and, and of course, my cousin David was with me, and we, we took the boat into the beach. I mean, it, we, this is remote. This is the yeah. west side of Cook Inlet. There's nothing there. Right. Wow. <clears throat> they hadn't discovered oil yet. Now they got oil. Uh, yeah. But uh, pulled the boat up as far as we could. And then you've probably got the picture of me when I don't have any clothes on out in the water in the in the in Alaska. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bring that. It's not that kind of movie. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we did. Uh, the, the some of the highest tides in Alaska occur in Cook Inlet, like wow. thirty some foot tides, and. Uh, I had to go swimming for the boat. So. <laughs> well, you got it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I still got that pack. That's a Trapper Nelson. <laughs> That's a Trapper Nelson pack. Nobody's got one of those. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a mountain goat, and uh, probably on Mount Persis where Hans has been up there a few times. And uh, I would, uh, but I, I had stories about hunting on my, but I don't know how much time you have because <laughs> in this, this goat, I packed it out whole. And, uh, and I think I left, my, the, left the rifle in the pack up there, so I got my cousin to go with me uh, back there. I said, we got to retrieve my rifle and pack because I packed the gold out whole. Yeah. So we drove up there and we took off. And this is a mountain that's, it's, it's, uh, it's hooked on the Mount Index. It's straight up and down and no trail. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I got there and I just got to my uh, rifle and pack, same pack even, and I heard a shot and it, it was up towards the top of the mountain and then we started going that way and I got in a rock slide and uh, I got to the rock slide ended and there was yeah. just straight up yeah. and I'm standing there looking and and here's my friend Chuck Ingalls yeah. laying down there in the rocks with blood all over his head yeah. and uh, he was unconscious. Huh. Wow. Or, I, or I thought he was dead. I yeah. thought he was falling off the cliff because right. it was a cliff right there. Yeah. <clears throat> well, anyway, after some time, he finally woke up. We got him, and we got it figured out that he'd shot straight up at a mountain goat. Yeah. And he had a seven millimeter out six improved. He was hand yeah. loading also. Yeah. And uh, you don't shoot straight yeah. up with. Uh, it was a, it's a, it's got a scope bit. The scope hit him right yeah. here. Oh boy. It put all of that right in his eye socket. Huh. And he was a complete mess. He, he was goofy and uh, wow. it just, it, it, he had a concussion and stuff. Huh. And uh, <laughs> so I got to tell a little dog story. Yeah. It comes into it. Now I had McGee the Wonder <laughs> Dog with in a flashlight. And I patched him up as good as I could. Being an embalmer, <laughs> I, I pretty much knew how to do that. And uh, we came off that mountain in the middle of the night with uh, uh, with the dog leading the way in a flashlight. Wow. Huh. And I still call that dog the McGee the huh. Wonder Dog. So it probably saved his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they got him out of there. So. 
So this is a, uh, a mule deer. This must have been uh, Lake Chelan, across from 25 Mile Creek, yeah. Navari, Navari yeah. Peak. Wow. And, uh, in this in this area here is where I shot my first deer with this rifle. Wow. Uh, it's amazing how you can remember an exact location yeah. from just a picture. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, how much <laughs> must be associated with the, with the whole experience that the, the yeah. picture is of. Yeah. I can't tell you what I had for breakfast, but I can tell you what happened in 1954. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it really well. Yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah. And we're, and we're, we're legal. I got the red hat on. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. God, this one here, where did I shoot that one at? I think that might be. I wonder if it's the same. Is it Chelan too? It could be at Chelan. God, I wouldn't ring old in either. Uh-uh. No. Okay, this is up in Alaska. Uh, the uh, and I wouldn't ring old in either. I was uh, that's was this was in 1957. Uh, you didn't have that gun for very long at that uh -huh. point. No. no, but I had the gun in uh, in uh, I had the gun in 1954, mm -hmm. and I, in this I think a previous picture here was probably yeah. in 54 because I see I was driving in 54. I could wow. borrowed my uncle Gene's truck and we drove, drove over there. Huh. That's amazing. You were reeling. The mosquitoes were really, really bad. That's what this, <laughs> this uh, white uh, towel is. I'd put it over my head. Huh. It was really bad. Oh, <laughs> this is, uh, I know this place real well. Uh, my purse is going have a glass down here that's, uh, and this is, uh, and, and there's the gun, and uh, but you know, it really did. It got too easy for me to, to kill goats with a with a rifle. And that, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> God! Now we're going back. There's there's Hans was born in '60, so what's that about '62 or three? Yeah, it's probably <laughs> four years old. Three, four probably. years old. Yeah. And uh, it was a day of President Kennedy, the, uh, after he'd been assassinated, it was the funeral. Wow. They were having that day. Huh. And it was, I think it was on a Saturday, it was a big deal. Yeah. So I drove up to, uh, up out of Granite Falls, there's the black-tailed deer. Yeah. And uh, also it's kind of hard driving too, I didn't see very good. <laughs> Deer. You don't see too many deer yeah. in the front end of a Volkswagen. <laughs> no, I've never seen one. <laughs> no, no, but but anyway, I uh, I remember it was just a terrible day. It was pouring down rain and kind of half snow and half rain, <clears throat> and uh, I was up by well, White Horse. I'm driving up the high, the road. And uh, in the hunting area, and there'd be guys sitting in their car, but nobody was out hunting. And I thought, well, I got my rain pants and yeah. coat and boots, and I'm going hunting. So yeah. I'd never been there, and I, I got out, and uh, one little ways, and I'll be darned, I see, I see the tracks in the snow. Wow. And, uh, and they were brand new, it was snowing, so I knew the deer were just ahead of me. So I kind of hurried up, and I remember kind of running over to the spot because I could look down over the hill. And there was this, there was this buck, this black-tailed buck. It was a big, it was a big buck. It's big. But the, uh, it had regressed. It was the old one. Oh. It, it uh, the horns had been better probably yeah. a year or two before. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I killed that deer and I, uh, 
drove home with it on the, <laughs> the only way I had to get it back home again. <laughs> you do what you gotta yeah. do. You do what you gotta do. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this. Okay, this is, God, that's up by Finney Creek, up on the Skagit River. And there's Hans, he's uh, yeah. a couple of years older now. <laughs> and uh, that must be a little spike or something. It is. Yeah. A little spike. A little spike. Yeah. I... Hey, did you take that one, Hans? No, no. I wouldn't even get to shoot that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I remember I was with them. We, uh, it was kind of like a little, it was a good spot there. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and sneaking through the woods with them, trying to be quiet. You know, he, he told me, you know, he puts his hand out, that means stop, you yeah, know, yeah. and, and uh, so I was a pretty quiet little kid. I wasn't doing a lot of stick breaking or talking, any, but it was, it was exciting for me. That was the first time I ever really got to go hunt, hunt with him, so. Uh, and, the, and then the, uh, the, the, after you shot that deer uh, uh, at Jerry Lang's place, yeah. we drove up, and this is, uh, my Hans and my nephew and uh, and Steve Novi that worked yeah. worked for my dad and I. I think we got the gun sitting on the tree there. I think. Uh, I think there's this guy. There might be. Probably. Yeah. Cause we were the only people in the camp that had deer there. <laughs> <laughs> in the whole whole campground. I we, think. We were I the think only you're one right. had deer and we had three. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, anyway, <laughs> Hans, we need to do yeah. some more hunting. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well you, you might have to take this out and shoot something. You know, <laughs> the, 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 good, the, the gun is just as good now and better looking than it's ever been yeah. in, its, in its life. Yeah, it's, well, uh, it's I, I've always turned just, out really nice with the, yeah. with the stock. I mean, that, I like that. Checkering. <laughs> the checkering was pretty pretty tired up here. Yeah, when it got well, carried. I can imagine. I can imagine. So it was it really got, tired. Yeah. It was just about worn out. It was there just were, about flat. Yeah, it was, there, were, <laughs> there were. All the lines were still there, so I didn't have to make any up. But there were some spots that were not really called yeah. checkering anymore. I, you know, it's hard to be around all the rocks goat hunting and everything, and that. Yeah. Not, they, you know, have it fall over and <laughs> booger the barrel or something, you know, but it, it, I think that the metal came out pretty doggone good on it. Uh, pretty nice, yeah, I got yeah. to see it before it was in the stock. I don't know what the bore looked like, but, uh, you know, I, uh, <laughs> it's not too bad. I mean, it'll, it's, it's probably, it'll do its job. It'll do its job. Yeah, no, I, it would still, yeah. I think my fondest memory is um, is that first deer that I shot because it was really kind of a it was kind of a lucky deal you know I, I before that I'd used 30 40 Craig but I got to use this rifle you know and I was in Eastern Washington and it was wide open and I had a four power scope and 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 we saw the deer and there was um, you know a lot of anticipation having the deer coming closer and closer and closer and then making a, a really good shot on the deer and, and um, you know, so that was, and then getting to have my dad with me, you know, because a lot of times that we'd hunt, we'd, we'd be apart. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one time that we were together, so, you know, and it's, it's amazing how long ago that was, but how well I can remember. I can remember, you know, everything from yeah. that from that day, so. Yeah, they're very powerful memories. It is, really is, so. Did you spend a number of trips with him before you got to shoot his Model 70? Um, no, I can remember him using it like when, like the, yeah, yeah, right. yeah the, you're, go, you're going along. Sure, and yeah, and, and, and what kind of the step up from is, uh, is that I got to carry it. Uh -huh. When, when you know, is is after the picture of the deer when I'm, I think I was probably five years old, but mm -hmm. after that I'd be with him and I'd get to carry the gun. Mm -hmm. He called, I was the gun bearer. And, uh, and, uh, and that was a big deal for me to get oh, to yeah, carry that sure. gun. Uh -huh. um, so that, and then I can, I can even remember the first shot that I made with it. It was kind of, I don't know if my dad kind of set it up, but we were at, at the farm and um, it, was a, it was a beer 
beer bottle sitting on a log and we were a long ways away, I was at least 100 yards and I wasn't very old, I was probably maybe eight years old. And I, and I was, he said I could shoot that gun. So, so I really tried hard and, and hit the beer bottle and I thought, boy, that's amazing. That, you know, I'd, before then it was mostly BB guns and stuff. So getting to shoot, shoot the 270 was special for me. So. So there was a, like a progression of, and throughout your childhood of yes. seeing him with this gun. Yes, absolutely. And then you get to yep. carry the gun yep. and then you get to shoot the gun right. and right. then you get to take a deer with it. Absolutely, uh, yes. Yeah, and you know, even me looking back, I mean, I've, <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday, is, is using this rifle, I've never seen something that was a legal buck that I didn't get. You know, I think I've shot six deer with that gun, and and it makes it even a little bit more exciting. You know, if you're bow hunting and you see a deer, you may or may not get it. You probably won't. But with, when I use this gun, if I see a deer and it had horns on it, um, I had pretty high expectations I was going to get that deer. So it um, so it made it kind of a kind of a special thing to get to use. Well, you mentioned that you are um, going to pass on this rifle to. Uh, I think he's the, he's probably who I will. I mean, I've I've been with him his whole life, and he's really somebody that is an amazing little little boy that takes care of stuff. And um, and if, if if I would really hope that you know that I that he is the one that could 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 use it. Um, but uh, but I really really appreciate the work that you guys did on it. I mean, you know, I I it. For having this gun, I've had it for a long time. I, my dad hasn't seen it for probably 40 years or more. He hadn't seen the gun. So, and you know, I had it and I took good care of it. And I, and a couple of times I thought well, I should fix it up myself, you know. And I, as I've done, I did my Model 12, I refinished the stock, I did all the metal work and stuff. And, and it turned out okay, but I thought, I thought, this is not for me <laughs> to, to tackle this gun. So, so I'm really, really happy with the work that you guys did. I mean, it turned out way better than a person could ever believe, and um, you know, and, and and it's a bit of trust, but I really, really trusted you because I knew I knew you could do it. So, and you Thank did you. better than imagined. So, you know, and I. I'd, I'd hate to bring my dad over here if it was a botched up <laughs> job seeing it because yeah, <laughs> he'd sure. bought it. So, but it, it really is a really nice job. So, thank you guys so much for for all you did. To possession of this Model 70. You know, I'd always loved to shoot and I love hunting. And my dad hunted a little bit. He, every year he'd go deer hunting. And of course, he shot the 30 40 Craig. And, uh, and I, and I believe, I'm tr trying to think back, I was probably 14 or 15 years old when I bought that gun now. And I, of course, I can't remember what I paid for it. <clears throat> it was in a house right there by South Junior High School, not too far from where I lived. What's yeah. your fondest memory associated with the gun? Uh, Maybe my wonderful shot that I made on that coyote was awful good. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was that running coyote. Yeah, running coyote. Yeah, that was a good one. I, it, uh, I'll never forget that. Uh, and uh, you know, I it uh, it just did everything I that uh, that a good gun should do. I never uh, it never. Uh, it never presented any problems to me. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was the gun that I wanted at the time, and I never, I never grew out of it. I still love it to this day. It's still. Yeah. You and your son have been on a number of hunting trips with this gun. Uh, what was the best trip you took together? Well, uh, when Hans in your rifle. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of neat when Hans shot uh, two deer with one shot. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was pretty memorable. Yeah. And uh, and then of course uh, probably the next hunt was uh, was the one where we had the long wait for the uh, for the deer coming down the hill. We just had to wait for him to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know that was a that was another one. Good good one shot kills and. Uh, 
uh, we uh, we had we had a good time together hunting. That. Uh, what is the significance of this firearm in your family? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of a family tradition. It's uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm glad that. That I had, I, I enjoyed. I loved that gun all the time I had it, and I'm just glad that uh, uh, that I could pass it on to uh, uh, somebody that I feel like appreciates it. Also, yeah. Yeah. appreciate fine things. Right. <laughs> How did it feel when you first took your son hunting with you? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, it was good. He was Hans was a good companion. Uh, I, uh, I, I guess I feel, almost felt it was my duty to uh, uh, take Hans like uh, like my dad uh, took me when I was young, and uh, exposed me to uh, things that you normally you wouldn't have. You know, if you uh, if you grew up, if you had a, a dad or somebody that nobody, if you had, didn't have anybody to take you, you probably wouldn't get into it. You wouldn't be mm -hmm. interested. Uh, so uh, hopefully I, I think I've been a good uh, influence on Hanson and, and I appreciate having him and having somebody to hand it down to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. I like that we've still got it. <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, it was just. Uh, I think I think we had a really good, a good growing up together. We got to do we got to do our hunting and uh, uh, a lot of fishing, a lot of hunting, and uh, it's kind of what life's all about. Can you tell us a two bucks for one bullet story <laughs> again? Well, I can tell you that uh, Hans wasn't very old then either. Uh, and uh, we went over and stayed uh, probably at my aunt and uncle's ranch in Ellensburg. And uh, I took Hans the day before the season where I'd, uh, I'd killed deer before. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I don't know, you know, it's been so long ago, I can't remember how far we walked to get there or anything. But anyway, I, we walked back quite a ways and I, I told Hans, I said, now tomorrow morning, opening day, I said, I want you to be up by that tree, that little lone pine tree up on top of that hill. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, I'll just be down, uh, you know, I won't, I'll be down over the hill there. Just don't worry about me. You just go up there. And uh, so we got out there, split up. Hans went up there. And I'll be darned. I can't remember how much time had passed because uh, we're talking, uh, yeah, I don't know, 55, 60 years ago. <laughs> and and uh, I heard the one shot. I went up there, and here's two bucks way in there. <laughs> so I had to, I had to take them. My my deer season was kind of short that <laughs> that year, <laughs> and. Uh, and then I remember walking back to the truck. I stepped on top of the rattlesnake, and that, uh, I think I scared the snake more than I scared me. But <laughs> that was a good hunt. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> How do you feel to know your son has has had the rifle fully restored as a surprise for you? You know, I appreciate that he did that. Uh, it's uh, you know I. Uh, I looked at the gun and it uh, it always looked it always looked good to me uh, because it had been through a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the gun now it looks absolutely beautiful. It uh, it's it's just as, it looks really nicer than it did when I bought it probably. Uh, and it only, and it was only two or three years old when I bought it probably. So it's uh, I'm I'm very delighted to have it restored. And uh, you know, like that, that gun can go down through multiple generations and still be a great gun. And it, and, I, and I think people would admire uh, 
a pre-64 Model 70 for many generations. Yeah, great gun. So tell us about the ding in Monte Carlo. How'd that, how'd that happen? <laughs> you know, the, the gun survived a lot of use. I, I, I killed a lot of deer, I killed a lot of goats, I killed bear, I killed elk. Uh, and it went to Alaska. Uh, I spent time on the fishing boat in the salt water. Uh, probably the hardest thing though was mountain goat hunting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's a wonder it even survived it. Uh, it's, uh, it it's, uh, I can't remember how the, how the stock got that way there, but uh, there's a, it, there was a lot of chances when I was, when I was uh, goat hunting and uh, uh, it, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was, uh, it's never been, I don't think it ever dropped it or anything, but it, it's, it went through some pretty rough times. I could, I, uh, when I was in Alaska on the boat, uh, I'd loaded a lot of shells. I loaded 300. I can remember 300 exactly. And, uh, <clears throat> and I'd run out of brass, so I was using uh, uh, 30 out of 6 brass. That I think it's almost identical. It's just, it's just a tad shorter, I think. You don't have to trim them when you shoot them. So <clears throat> anyway. I shot at a seal. They had a, uh, a bounty on seals in 1957. That was two years before Alaska was a state. And uh, I, uh, I shot at a seal and, the, and the, 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 uh, the gun didn't discharge. So I, I, uh, I put another round in and the seal didn't come up. But I looked down on the deck and there was a, a powder on the deck. And I thought, oh, uh oh. So I looked, and the primer had gone off, but it, for some reason or other, didn't ignite the powder. And, uh, and of course, I put another bullet right on top of the first one. And uh, with my good fortune, uh, the seal didn't pop his head back up again, or uh, the gun probably wouldn't be here. Uh, and, uh, and I, probably could have gotten injured pretty bad too. So I, I lucked out on that. You know, the only thing I can, I can say is that uh, my, my father uh, belonged to the uh, uh, National Rifle Movement and uh, uh, he, was a, he was a life member. So I grew up reading uh, the National Rifle Movement magazine and, and, uh, and Jack O'Connor had, was the, one of the writers there. And of course his favorite rifle, all of the articles I wrote, he, he, he wrote about the Model 70 Winchester and he liked the, the, the caliber 270. And uh, I remember reading all of those, his stories. And, uh, and so I guess it, it, I kind of in, evolved not knowing any better, but uh, he, he influenced me to want that gun, to want the, the one that he thought was the ultimate classic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I, and since I bought that gun, I've never ever thought about having anything else. No, I was gonna say, you proved him right. Yep, uh, it, was the, my, it was the ultimate, still is. I'd like to thank Hans and Jerry. Uh, thank you for bringing the gun. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to restore it. And thank you for sharing so much of your family with us. Uh, it's really an honor. Uh, it's an honor to hear your stories. It's an honor to work uh, for you. It's an honor to be able to honor your family's legacy. Thank you.